Alrighty, friends, uh, we are here today to talk about our good friend here, Adobe Fresco. Um, and we're going to be looking at vector drawing. So vector brushes, how are they different from pixel brushes? Well, I'm sure many of you already know the difference, but it's important to uh, point this stuff out for folks so that they're very aware of how these two categories of brushes are different from one another, okay? Let's take a look at that first. So I have here on the screen a little sketch. This is a drawing I'll work on today while we're talking about this. Um, and I use the vector brushes to do this sketch. Now, I'm just gonna grab a pencil here in our sketching category, okay? And I'm gonna come over here and uh, do a little drawing kind of the same size as what we see over here on the left, okay, or thereabouts, right? Little face here, okay. Now, uh, let's say that I draw this and then I decide I want to enlarge it for some reason, okay. Um, well, here's the deal. When I go to enlarge it, I'll just slide this over here next to this one, okay? Let's see what happens. So as I come in this way, what do you get? Well, I was using a pixel brush, and so no surprise there. What you see are the individual pixels that make up the brush strokes that I was creating with that default pencil here in Adobe Fresco, okay? Now, why don't we compare what's over there on the right to what's over here on the left. And you will notice that there are no visible pixels here on the left. And that is because vector brushes create line art and uh, art in general that is infinitely scalable. You can scale it up to the size of the Empire State Building and it is still gonna be crisp and clean and clear. And that's one of the things that people love about, about vector brushes. You might be asking then, and I get this question a lot, well, then why don't people just draw everything with vector brushes? Well, there are, of course, limitations to what you can do with vector brushes, as there are limitations with what you can do with pixel brushes. And one of the limitations you have with vector art is that you cannot have this textural kind of a look that you see on the right um, and these very subtle transitions in hue, saturation, and value, and soft edges, and things like that. Vector art is uh, going to be comprised of shapes that have a clean edge, clean line, uh, separating one shape from another, uh, one area of the art from another. Now, of course, there are a few exceptions here and there. You can, in fact, create gradients and uh, things like that in a vector environment like Adobe Illustrator, for example, uh, but they don't quite work the same way as how they would work with uh, pixels. Um, and if I were to, to, for example, let me just grab a painting tool here in our lovely live brushes category, because it's so fun to play with these anyway. Um, let's say, for example, I decide to do something like this, and I'm gonna crank up the water on this so you can see what happens when I blend it. All right, see that? Watch the paint move there as I paint, right? Now, to get an effect like what you're seeing here with vector brushes, that would be almost impossible. Now, you could get pretty close with a lot of really careful work, creating all kinds of gradients and all kinds of little subtle transitions using um, separate areas of color and so on. But I'm sorry, folks, it just wouldn't be the same. And so depending on what kind of imagery you're trying to create, if it's more painterly or tends to be trying to emulate natural media, particularly the kind of natural media that doesn't have so clean a line or an edge or an appearance. Um, for example, inking is great with vector brushes if you're doing nice clean inking, but if you wanted to do some kind of inking that was more along the lines of, let's say, if I grab my, uh, go to this Keith Herring brush section, the Sumi brushes, Sumi ink brushes in the Keith Herring brush uh, category, for example. 
Now, you can see that when I draw with them like that. Look at all those little changes where the line breaks apart. You can see the bristle work. Sometimes it's a little lighter, sometimes darker, right? All this kind of stuff, if you're trying to pull that off with vector brushes, you're probably not going to be able to do so great a job. But if you're trying to do something like this, now if I come into the ink category here in Fresco and use the Belgian Comics brush, if I were trying to draw over this and get these nice smooth lines like so, well, I could probably pull that off pretty nicely with a vector brush, okay? That would be something I could do. All right, now, I wouldn't get all this little stuff where it's breaking apart a tiny bit here and there. There's a little bit of a sort of a broken edge now and then, which is all part of that emulating the natural media. But generally speaking, something like this I could pull off with vector brushes, and that's what I'm gonna do here today. And we're gonna talk about how these tools work, okay? Now, I know people are joining me here in the chat, and they wanna say hello. And I want to also ask if you have any questions up until this point about what I'm talking about. And when I say people are joining me in the chat, folks, I'm talking about be.net slash live. Okay, that is where I am reading the chat. You can uh, also watch this, of course, on YouTube, and you can also watch it on Twitter. But if you do have a question for me, head over to be.net slash live. Make sure you have a Behance account. They're free. They take about a minute and a half, two minutes to set up. You can join the live chat here while we're watching and you can ask me questions, okay? Alrighty, moving on. Let's hide all this nonsense for a minute. Um, here's one of the nice things about using vector brushes and pixel brushes in Fresco in this one single drawing environment. Um, if I choose to draw with a vector brush, now I've just been drawing with pixel brushes, okay? So I'll bring that later back. I've just been drawing with pixel brushes. If I select here, a vector brush, okay, it's the third category down on the uh, left there in my toolbar, and I start to draw, okay, well, look what happened over here on the right with my layers, okay, I'm tapping them right now, here's my little layer stack. Um, what happened was Fresco automatically jumped me back to the nearest vector layer, so I could keep my vector art se uh, separate from my pixel line art here. And uh, that's really nice because it keeps track basically of what tool you're using. If you're using a vector tool, vector brush, it's gonna jump you over to a vector layer. And of course, if I come back to the pixel brushes here, right, and I grab another pixel brush and start drawing, it's gonna pop me back up over here on the right. You see, back up to that top layer here. That is my nearest pixel layer. So it's going to keep those separate for you. Okay. All right. Hiding this again, coming back over here. I'm going to make a selection of all this and just erase it for the moment. And let's talk about this category of brushes, vector brushes. When you tap on that category, you can see that we have eight different brushes for you to choose from. These come uh, automatically in the app. Um, they all have their own properties and they behave differently from one another and you can test those out and see how they work. Um, for example, the basic round brush. If I open up my brush settings panel down here at the bottom left, um, you'll notice that it is a basic round brush. Whoops, I went to the erasers. Pardon me. Come back over here. Uh, it's a basic round brush and it is going to respond to pen pressure to control the diameter of the brush. Okay. Um, but we've also, we've also added some cool stuff here in our brush settings for vector brushes in Fresco, such as the ability to add tapering of the line, meaning that it's going to get thinner either at the beginning of the line or at the end or both. Now, watch what happens if I crank these all the way up to 100 just to give you a demonstration. When I draw a line with that brush, Okay, no matter how much pressure I use, it's always going to taper the line at the beginning and at the end. And there are times when you're gonna to wanna to use that. Okay, and that's a really handy thing to have. Maybe there are instances where I'm drawing lines that I know just have to taper front and back, okay? Well, I can do that with no effort at all simply by turning on that tapering, alrighty. 
Um, so that's one thing you can do. We also have velocity dynamics turned on here. And of course you can turn them off, but if you want to have them turned on, something pretty cool you can do is have the velocity dynamics control what happens to the width of the line, the diameter of the line, depending on how quickly you're moving your stylus. Okay, in this case, I'm using Apple Pencil on iPad. But remember that Fresco also works on numerous Windows devices. So go ahead and check out um, on the Adobe Fresco page at the Adobe website. Um, there is a requirements page. It'll show you the system requirements. Lots and lots of Windows devices now support Fresco as well. But in this case, I am drawing on iPad. Got my Apple Pencil here. I've turned the velocity dynamics up really high. Now, if I draw slowly, okay, I'm going to get a thin line. If I speed up, I'm going to get a thicker line. And you can invert this if you like. So if I come back to my velocity dynamics, I can go the other direction. So now if I draw slowly, I'm going to get a thicker line. And if I draw quickly, I'm going to get a thinner line. And you see what I did right there? I snapped that line because I paused for a moment. That's our snap line feature, which means that you can draw a line. Just hold it and wait. You draw kind of a straight line. There we go. Hold it and wait, and it's going to snap. And then you can, of course, reposition it as you like. But let's say that I'm just drawing slowly like this, and then I decide I want to speed up. It's going to make those lines thinner. And uh, that can also be something you want to do if you're doing some kind of special calligraphy that emulates what it's like to work with a um, pen that has the ink running out of it, flowing down at a consistent rate, which means that as you move slowly, the ink, ink is being deposited okay, evenly, but if you zip across the page, you're going to get something like that. All right, that could be pretty fun. Also nice for drawing. Um, well, let's take a look at what else we have. We have a basic taper brush. This has that tapering sort of built in, okay? So if you just want to use the tapering, you're going to have that already set out of the box and ready to go. We have a flat brush, okay? This is going to make it so that the line that you're creating is not using a stamp shape that is a perfect circle, okay? Instead, it has a flat edge to it. Um, and again, this is something that a lot of lettering people might like, but for drawing, it has its own qualities as well. Those of you who are fans of uh, the art of Bill Watterson, for example, who did Calvin and Hobbes, might like a look like that just for your character design to kind of have that end not be quite so uh, um, round, right? There's my little attempt to draw Calvin. You get it. Um, but you can see what I mean by the qualities that that, uh, that brush has, and that might be really suited, suitable for your style of art that you're drawing. Okay, I'll clear that away so I don't get in trouble with copyright. And um, we also have a chisel brush, similar to basic flat. Um, the chisel has a nice squared off edge to it, okay? And the angle is fixed. What I mean by that is the angle of this brush remains at basically a uh, 15 degree angle, I believe it is. Um, and so if I go down and then across, and down and across and down and across. Every time I move across, I'm using a thinner part of the, uh, the shape of that nib, so to speak. And as I come down, I'm using the full width of it, okay? And that could also be good for writing, for calligraphic stuff, you know? Hello. To have that nice natural transition from thin to thick happening for you in different directions as you move along. Um, and the basic terminal, let's see, what happens is as you complete the line, it's always going to broaden out to its full width, okay? Um, and again, this could be useful for cartooning and for all kinds of stuff as well. You gotta play with these and see what you like and see what they could be good for. End taper and beginning taper are as you would expect. Uh, the beginning taper, of course, means that there's a taper at the beginning of the line. Whoops. 
right? And if I just wait at the end, I'm not gonna get it, okay? Um, and then the opposite happens with the basic end taper brush, okay? Tapers at the end, no matter what you do, right? All of this is editable, of course, here in your brush settings. How much taper do you want, right, etc. The angle can also be changed, which is nice, right? Because if I want to make this less round or flatter, like the chisel brush, for example, and I can change the angle of it. These things are possible as well. Okay, pressure dynamics controls. How much influence you have over the size of the brush, right? And don't forget we have velocity dynamics turned on as well. I can always deactivate the velocity dynamics by simply unchecking this little box next to where it says velocity dynamics down here at the bottom. Okay, turn that off. And now line weight will be more consistent if I'm using the same amount of pressure all the way through. Okay? All right. And that leads us finally to the basic velocity taper brush, which is the brush I think I'm gonna to use today to draw with. Now I like this one because it has some pretty cool stuff going on where, open up the uh, settings here. You'll see that my taper mode is set to velocity at the moment. And what this means, am I gonna make my beginning taper a little bigger. What this means is if I'm going to draw a line, I'm going to pause for a moment and then pull like this, pause and then pull, pause and pull. It's going to give me the full diameter of the brush at the beginning of that stroke and then allow me to taper away from there. I'm pausing for maybe only, you know, a fraction of a second, but it's just long enough for Fresco to recognize it as a pause rather than an immediate attack into a line. Here's the difference. I'm going to now draw a line where I begin drawing in a direction the moment my Apple Pencil touches the screen. Watch. Look at the difference. In this case, I'm going to have a taper at the beginning and a taper at the end, okay? Whereas previously, no taper at the beginning because I paused like so and then pulled as opposed to simply drawing a line. So attacking the canvas can give you these really nice lines that taper both at the beginning and the end. And this is a natural way for people to draw, okay? But you'll also want to have this option to stop for a moment and pull away and create these kinds of lines. It gives you the best of both worlds there. Lots of control. In addition to that, you can go the opposite direction. You can attack the canvas and then pause at the end of the stroke. And so watch, let's see what that looks like here. Attack and wait, see that? attack and wait, attack and wait. And you can see the line catching up with me at the end. I can actually see it getting larger and changing um, as I rest the pencil there at the end of the stroke. This is a pretty unique feature, okay? And speaking of unique features, I wanna show you something right now since I have these several lines drawn here all in a row. Um, and that is another feature that we've added for vector drawing artists out there, which we think is pretty useful and pretty nit uh, nifty, and that is this. Let's say that I want all of these lines to follow this shape here, okay? And I want all this stuff here behind this new line that I've drawn, okay, this line here. I want everything to just be gone. I want to erase it away and I want it to do it, I want to do it fast I want to do it cleanly, okay? We have this cool thing you can do with our little touch modifier here. Touch modifier is the circle that I am now touching and dragging around the screen, all right? I can double tap it and tap it once more. 
And what I've done is I've now activated this very special mode with vector brushes called vector trimming. And I'm going to turn on my touch uh, touches here so that you can see everything I'm doing. This is very important. There. So now when I touch the screen, you can see what I'm touching, okay? Because I want you to notice that I'm going to start drawing in this direction, okay? And I'm going to draw down and through these lines. Watch this. See that? Happens fast, doesn't it? I'm going to draw through these lines and they just go away. This is what vector trimming is. It allows you to trim away many lines at once, one line at a time, and it will trim it down until it meets another line. So let's take, for example, I'll make a selection so you can see this. See this line right here? All right, I want to get rid of that line. So with vector trimming, what I would do is I would double tap the touch modifier, touch it once more. Now I'm in this very special mode here and I just pass right through there and it's gone. Perfect. Maybe I wanna do every other one, just pass through these. Okay, that is a pretty cool feature. I could do this. Just knock away some of these. Why are these hanging out here, you might be wondering. Why these? Those were part of the original lines that I drew there, right? It remembers the order in which you drew the lines as well, which is pretty cool. And so it's left them behind. But of course, if I want to get rid of them, it's no problem. I can simply still, in that mode, just go ahead and swipe through them, right? And get rid of this, and get rid of that, and get rid of that. All right, so this is a pretty handy feature. Let me know what you think about that in the chat. Okay, gang? Let's see here. Any questions or comments? Um, Tracy says, I want to, I have Fresco on my iPhone, but I want to use it on the iPad. So you're in the market for an iPad. What is the best Apple iPad device to recommend? Well, Tracy, the good news is that Fresco will work on any iPad that supports Apple Pencil. Now, a long time ago, that used to just be the iPad Pro, but that is no longer the case. In fact, the new iPad Airs are very powerful, very zippy, and they're less expensive, and um, I think they're fantastic. So I would point you in that direction, but you could also even get an iPad Mini, and you can draw with Fresco on that. Will there be more vector brushes for Fresco soon? Yes, Laura, there will be. We're working on them right now. Um, alrighty, so uh, let's continue. That is vector trimming, very cool feature. Um, our good pal Jinjin Jin Sun did a cool demo of vector trimming for the Adobe Max Keynote in October of 2020. You can watch that back on YouTube if you wanna see how she did it. Um, and uh, yes, it's a, it's a good feature. We also have another YouTube video um, where another artist uh, does a great job, Tracy Ching, of showing you how uh, she uses vector trimming. Um, and it's uh, pretty nifty. Save you a lot of time. Save you a lot of time, and also you could try new things with it. Um, all right, now, before I get to the drawing portion of this, right, uh, I do want to also point out that Creating vector art in Fresco is not limited to using vector brushes, okay? There's a lot more you can do than simply uh, using the brushes here. Um, and I wanna quickly demonstrate that for you, all right? So here, okay, I have a shape library, all right? Um, these are some recently used shapes up here at the top. And shapes are vector assets that you can create in just a matter of seconds over with Adobe Capture. When you save them into a Creative Cloud library, they will show up instantly in Fresco. Um, and so, under characters, for example, I have this guy. Um, I created him as a drawing first and then I converted him into a shape, okay? 
Um, shapes, of course, are infinitely scalable. They are vector after all. Once you put them on the canvas, you have options. You'll see at the bottom of the screen here, I have fill, erase, mask, and select. I can make a mask out of this. I can make a selection out of it, right? And I could paint inside that selection and I could do this even with my uh, live brushes or other pixel brushes, right? So if I grab the watercolors here, I could just start painting, grab another color, paint over here and grab another color, paint over here. And just like that, I've now filled that line art with all these pretty colors, okay? So anytime I need to use that shape again, I simply come back to my shapes and there it is, right where I left it. I can move it around, I can resize it, okay? Rotate it, transform it, distort it, etc. cetera. Um, Here's another shape I created for my uh, portraiture drawing class. Useful little sort of planes of the head model, right? Now to create these shapes, what do you do? Well, I'll show you. I'm going to uh, hide this layer here and hide, uh, hide our uh, sketch for just a moment. And why don't we just take this Belgian comics brush and we'll draw this uh, dog here, okay? Alrighty. Here he is. Little dog there. Hanging out. And let's imagine that I want to create vector art out of this. Very simple to do. I would just do a quick export here and save the image, which means it's going to go to my camera roll. Okay. Now, if I come to my photos, I can see my recent uh, photos. By the way, you want to see something really scary? Check this out. Here's me as an old man. I used that, that weird, crazy filter in uh, Photoshop where you can age yourself. Holy cow, is that sobering. Um, all right, now look, here is that photo. Excellent. Um, now what do, I, what do I want to do with this? Well, I want to open it in Adobe Capture. So I'm going to slide over here to Capture, okay? And we're going to create here a shape. I'm going to go to Shapes, and I'm going to add a shape, okay? So we just hit Add, Import Image. I'm gonna select it from the camera roll. There it is. And here we have our art. And I say, yeah, it looks good, okay. Let's crop it. Because we don't need all that space around it, right? So this just takes a couple seconds. And I say, save. And there it is, shape 22, you call it whatever you like, okay. So we'll go ahead and uh, call it dog, done. Save. Uh, the end. Now, look at that. It's added it to my library. When I come back here to Fresco, I'm going to come to my shapes and I'm going to go to the Max 2020 library, which is where I saved those shapes. And lo and behold, right up there in the top left, you see our dog. So I used a pixel brush to create some line art. I opened it in Capture, which by the way is another totally free app, saved it to a library, and now it is an infinitely scalable piece of vector art. That's crazy. Which means, of course, that I could place it here in the document and I could fill it with color, okay? Um, and I'll then Actually, I'm going to do this on a new layer. Okay, folks, check this out. New layer. And when I say fill, it's going to ask me, do you want this to be vector or pixel? I'm going to say vector. Okay. Come over here. Let's hide our pixel doggy for a second. And what I'm going to do is grab a vector brush. And then I can just finish drawing this art. Right? Hello.
Okay, so we went from using, and I apologize, it's not the best drawing in the world, but hey, whatever. I went from using a pixel brush to using a vector brush to finish it. And now it is infinitely scalable. So really, this is very powerful. Uh, you can imagine doing a finished illustration with some pixel brushes and wanting to vectorize it, pulling it into capture, creating vector art out of it. Um, and I have actually done that numerous times. It's really effective, really powerful stuff. Uh, so keep that in mind as something that you can do in Fresco. Okay. One more quick thing I want to show you before we draw here is this. The ability to quickly fill, okay, with vector brushes. And that's what our good friend here, the paint bucket tool is good for. So you can just tap and fill. And I know that when you're using pixel brushes, you have to try and change the settings of the paint bucket tool to be able to try and fill out to the edges. Well, since we're dealing with crisp, solid shapes, you don't have to worry about that with vector brushes, okay? since there's no pixelization to deal with, which also means I could then grab a different color and simply fill that quickly to change my colors. One of the nice things people can do is create line art and then do their solid color fills on a separate layer with vector so that they can tap and fill and change those colors very, very quickly to see what works. Knowing that every time they do change the color, um, nothing is going to change with regards to the um, edges or boundaries of those shapes, right? That's not going to happen. And just be aware that if you are on a vector layer and drawing with vector brushes, you can still use tools like your lasso tool, right? And whatever selection I make, this is no longer going to be a raster selection. This is a vector selection. So you see that everything lines up nice and sharp, just as you would want it to, okay? So pretty cool that you can do all of this here in one place. Fresco gives you the ability to do vector and raster art all in one happy place. Okay, goodbye. We're clearing you away, going back to our brush and I am ready to draw. And before I do anything else, let's just double check and see if anybody has any questions. Remember folks, I'm answering questions and looking at comments here on be.net slash live. Libraries, yes, libraries are awesome. Um, just checking here to see if we have any question. Works from Photoshop as well for quite a few things. Uh, yes, capture with Photoshop, amazing combination. Could this be done with more complex objects like textures? Yes, Laura, it actually can. Um, of course, the vector asset that you generate will be larger, more complex. It'll take a little while longer to generate it, but yes, it can do that. Um, is it possible to edit the vectors? Uh, no, not in Fresco, other than simply erasing them or transforming them. But if you're talking about editing paths, then Illustrator is the place to go for that. Christine, you're drawing with a vector brush and it's leaving breaks in the line? That sounds like a, either a bug or it could actually have something to do with your Apple Pencil because I've experienced that before in, in numerous apps. And what I've done is simply recharged the pencil or reconnected it or made sure that the tip of the pencil is screwed on tightly. Um, and that has solved it for me. So, so let me know if that solves it for you. Alrighty. So let's go ahead and do some drawing here. Made that a little too big, 7.5. Okay. Now I like this taper brush because if I want to, I can just sort of flick it like that and get that really sharp taper. I really like that. That just makes me happy. Whoops, I'm gonna turn off my touch stuff here so that it's not getting in the way of me seeing what I'm drawing. Hope you don't mind. 
There we go. Um, another thing to mention is how nice it is to use uh, smoothing. I've got mine set up to 70 right now, but try that because it's, it's really nice to be able to use uh, the smoothing. And I can adjust the taper too to make them both even. So I've got taper at the beginning and taper at the end. Only when I choose to use it by being zippy with the line. And this would be a good case to just fill that in with the paint bucket tool. Right. Your eraser will also be a nice smooth vector shape. See that? So everything you erase is really clean. You can also adjust smoothing on your eraser which is a very nice feature. So if you kind of, I went a little nuts there, just make that a little smaller. And then come in and come in and just zip, snap that like that. Some people just love vector art because it's so sharp, right? Something about it, it's just so perfect. It makes people happy. Other folks really like that natural media emulate, emulation where you have a few happy accidents, things not looking 100% perfecto, right? It's all down to the individuals, down to what you like. Me, I like them both. I like them both for different things, you know? By the way, you might be wondering why I'm drawing this particular sort of character. Um, I was thinking about that game Mega Man from when I was a kid and just did a little Mega Man drawing, in fact, the other day. So I think that kind of stuff is just on my mind. And I wanted to draw something kind of like that. But you can see just how nice it is to draw with this velocity taper brush. Look at those lines I'm getting. Hide the sketch for a second here. So crisp. So clean. Right? So fun. So fun. All right. Let's paint bucket that. It's also really satisfying to do that. I don't know why, but to just get it. Gotta make sounds when you draw, folks. It just makes everything better. Woo! Right? Okay, and back to our sketch. I'm gonna knock that back a little bit more. I don't need it quite so dark. I like to have my sketches really faint when I draw. Okay. Come around here, connect. Actually, I'm gonna have the hair kind of flop over. See how nice it is to draw those fast lines? Because I know I'm gonna get that taper when I do that uh, with this particular brush. It's one of the cool things about it. Right? And I can always come in here and I can get more picky about those lines too if I want to. Sort of reshape them, etc, etc. Right? I could even use vector trimming if I want. If I see any areas that kind of overlap, like for example, this area right here, that little bump. Uh, if I go like this and do my vector trimming, I should be able to, I should be able to just kind of pass right through there. Whoops, I erased the whole thing. Maybe I was wrong. <laughs> uh, oh, there it was. Okay, I went the wrong direction. Here, check it out. I just go pop, 
There, gone. So cool. Same here. Bop. Clean that up. It's like cheating, you know? That one didn't work. And I think I know why. Because it wasn't overlapping, really. Um, but you don't have to be as, as picky as all this. You know, I'm just... What can I say? No reason to really do that. Especially not in a little demo like this, so... Come on, Kyle. Don't make people bored with your perfectionism. He says as he corrects another line. Um, all right, so then, yeah, I don't even know what's going on here. It's some kind of like half helmet, I guess, but it's got a soft cloth attachment there. <laughs> I probably should have tried to logically work out exactly how this thing really works, uh, but, you know. We'll just pretend it makes sense. Probably dangerous to have those line up exactly there, and that's better. You know, kind of gets into tangent land. If you don't know what a tangent is, it's a good thing to know about. Tangents are these uh, areas of your drawing where one line um, bumps up against another and creates either a problem with your understanding of uh, what is in front of another, what thing is in front of another thing, right? You want that to always be very clear. Um, or it might also just create an uncomfortable sort of um, connection between two areas, like a tension between the two. Uh, and you got to resolve that, okay? Kind of get into like this meditative state when you're drawing with, uh, with lines that have this quality to them where they're just so fluid, you know? And I like that. Here's a good use for this taper brush. Bam, 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 bam. You know, just to add some tone under there. It's not really tone, but it's giving us this impression that there's a shadow there, right? And here's a good example of why I would use a, a vector trimming. Like, I really want to get a nice crisp line across here, so I can go like that, you know, just to really make sure I get it in one good pass. Turn on my vector trimming and just knock that out, you know? Isn't that nice? And then here I want to kind of just connect that. That looks nice. I'll right, pause for a second, see if I have any questions. You have the smoothing turned up, Christine, you said. Oh, it's a, oh, you're using a Huion tablet. Gosh, I don't know anything about those tablets. I'm so sorry, no, no clue. Um, although I would say that since I'm not experiencing that without I mean, with the Apple Pencil and on the iPad, unless I have a loose uh, pencil tip or it's not doing so great with batteries, you know, I think your, your tablet might be the culprit. But I can't say for sure. Can't say for sure. Uh, all right. Carrying on. Viola, you like the lashes? Cool, thanks. Anything I do is stolen from somewhere else I've seen it. <laughs> like most illustrators I know, you just kind of follow tricks that you see other people do and you go, oh, that's how you do that. Okay, I'll try that. So I don't know where I picked up that sort of lash technique, but certainly not original to me. Add some weight down here. 
So something you can do if you're inking is to think about the line weight being a little heavier towards the bottom of an object, a part of an object, you know, just kind of helps make it look right. And maybe there's some sort of like thing there on the back of the hands. I don't know what that is exactly, but whoops, let's make sure that perspective wise that makes sense. There. Better. You might notice I zoom a lot. Ah, makes me feel like I've got a bit more control, you know, when I do that. Just to zoom in and out to see how things are going and also to draw specific uh, lines and stuff it just seems to work better for me whoops I never know what these kinds of things are when you see these details. Um, you know, the kind of details you add just because they look cool, but it's not like it really serves any function. And I think the best uh, character designers slash, you know, the, pe the people who do this for a living, not me, they're always thinking more about like, well, how would that actually work and why is it there? And I should do more of that. You know, that's a good habit to get into. You know, thinking about why something is a part of a costume or whatever. Besides it maybe just kind of having a nice shape or whatever. And folks, you know, I can't believe I didn't point this out, but you don't have to use the eraser to erase. You can use the brush you're using to erase so easily with that touch modifier. If you just hold it down, it automatically becomes an eraser for the exact brush that you are using. So convenient. Pro tip, gang. Use that feature. If you want to lock it into eraser mode, just double tap it. Okay, double tap your old touch modifier and you are erasing. Oh, the dreaded ellipse. Trying to draw an ellipse freehand like this. But don't worry, we have drawing aids to the rescue. They are on the way, folks. Nice drawing aids for Fresco are on the way sooner than later. So I'll be very happy to see what you all think about those when they come out. They're around the corner. So you don't have to wait too long. But when, Kyle, when? Sorry, I can't say that. And I'm not trying to be mean or anything. It's just, you know, I have, I have to uh, abide by the rules about talking about when features are coming out, etc. So don't be mad at me, please. Ah, ha, ha. Okay. Can't stand tangents, says Cody. Me neither, Cody. I can't stand tangents either. That's why I try and get rid of them. Christine, it seems to be working better for you. You changed the brush. Hmm. Yes. All right, down we go and up and over. And then out, down, over, down. Connect those two here.
always hard in like a three quarter view to sort of figure out how to line stuff up. You know, you gotta constantly be thinking about that stuff. Does it make sense in three dimensions in the round? You know, you gotta think about it. And a lot of times you have to sort of, whoops, got a little wobbly there. A lot of times you gotta draw it, look at it, and then figure out where it's wrong. You know what I mean? Sometimes you just have to draw it first. You won't nail it on the first go, that's fine. Boy, what do we ever do before undo? I think the answer is a lot tighter sketches. That's my guess. Whoops, it's not round enough, is it? Let's try that again. Round. Okay. We're almost there. I'm gonna run out of time here in a couple minutes. Um, but we got a fair bit done and we talked a lot about vector drawing here in Fresco. One of the really slick things you can do in the app. Um, and I think more people need to give it a try. You know, even if you are a diehard pixel brush person. Um, just change it up every now and then. Try something new. It's healthy. It's good for artists to do that. Um, you know, I sort of built my whole career on that idea. <laughs> Got bored with stuff, so tried something new and then suddenly would discover some new way of working that I could sell to clients, right? Um, it, it kept me feeling like I was always evolving and changing and growing and uh, we all need that, we all need that. Got that line wrong there. Thinking again about what I was talking about with like symmetry and aligning stuff, right? So that's gonna come a little lower like that. And around it goes. Also, I'm kind of rushing here because I want to finish this in the next minute. Uh, can it be done? Yeah, it can be, but maybe not with great quality. So, you know. Not sure I should be doing that, but. Um, alrighty, you know, pretty much there, right gang? Pretty much there. Hide this. Uh-huh, okay. Well, you know, with the exception of a, a few little areas, I'd probably want to mess with line weight and so on. It was pretty much good to go. We'll hide the sketch and you'll see that, of course, with it being vector art, it is infinitely scalable. What a wonderful thing, right? I can kind of just come around the silhouette and get a little beefier if I want. That'd be a fun thing to do all the way around. Um, and I do that sometimes. I'll just beef up some of the line work all the way around, you know? Add a few more details here and there, make it look more finished, but uh, this is pretty much it. All right, well, thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope you all are gonna have a great weekend, wherever you are. Um, and give these vector brushes a try and see what you come up with, okay? Um, everybody take care of yourselves, take care of each other. Um, remember please to be kind and uh, I will say ciao.
for now, and I'll see you next week.